Hey guys, welcome back to All and Law. This is a medical video lecture. Surgery. And today we're going to talk about a very important topic that's small bowel obstruction. Small bowel obstruction. Before starting a discussion on this, I request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Okay guys. So to understand what's a small bowel obstruction is, before that we should understand what's small bowel. Small bowel, it extends from, you know, esophagus, okay, then we have a stomach, right? From the stomach, at the end of stomach, there exists the three main parts of the small bowel, that's the duodenum, then we have jejunum, okay? Then we have what you call ileum. Just this is a rough diagram. This, if this is a stomach. Okay. This is esophagus. And this is a duodenum. This is jejunum. And then we have ileum. Okay, this did duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. They together called as small bowel. So small bowel obstruction is if there is any obstruction over here from the duodenum to what duodenum to ileum, then we call it as small bowel obstruction. So we have different types of obstruction. One either it can be a partial or a complete obstruction. Let me classify the next screen, okay? So types of SBO, that's a small bowel obstruction. And this is really very important topic, guys. So we have what you call, I, either it could be a partial or either it could be what you call completed or a complete, what you call a, a small bowel obstruction. Partial means there is a passage of some, what you call, um, the food into this obst through this obstruction if it's what you call if it's complete means there is a what you call the obstruction is complete no fluid will what you call pass through that uh, obstruction right or either it can be some other types of classification like simple class uh, what you call sbo the small bowel obstruction or either it could be strangulated simple means the patient doesn't have any what you call more symptoms of what you call like uh, you just have abdominal pain okay nausea vomiting but strangulation means there is a strangulation there is the death of the tissue there is a necrosis and that leads to what you call a peritoneal infection perforation peritoneal signs so it's really very fatal conditions if you don't treat this um, this uh, the patient will land up in what you call um, death that's why it's a really very important Okay, guys, and remember, you have to differentiate the small bowel obstruction from the large bowel obstruction. That's really very important. Okay, so let's talk about the causes for that. Causes for... SB or small bowel obstruction. The most common being the adhesions. Adhesions. So remember these adhesions post-operative or through after what you call a blunt trauma accounts for more than half of the SBO cases. Means more than 50% of the cases you see what you call the cause for SBO is adhesions. It could be either due to the post-operative or either it could be due to some blunt trauma or penetrating trauma, right? So in your assembly, if you wanna say that the patient is having a small bowel obstruction, then what you have to look for, look for any history of past surgery or any accident trauma or any kind of what you call a fight, blunt trauma, penetrating injuries. Okay guys, try to look for those. The other causes can be 
like what you call the hernias. Hernias, what happens when there is a protrusion of the contents of abdominal contents through the weakened what you call abdominal muscles or okay these intestines try to protrude through them and when there is a sudden compression for example if this is what you call this is a protrusion of abdomen okay this is abdomen and the intestine are you hear okay and the hernias get what happens when sometimes the pressure over here if it develops it ca it causes compression of this and thus results in the lack of blood supply to this part of area this parts get strangulated this parts get what you call necrotic and the infection will spread and this will lead to peritoneal infection or a peritoneal signs so if you what you call the signs of intestinal ischemia we have three things remember fever of more than 100 100 tachycardia more than 100 beats per minute and peritoneal signs so remember all these three together call, we can call it as there are signs of what you call intestinal ischemia right so remember the obstruction can be caused by not only by the addition and hernias we have uh, call, like malignancies malignancy can also cause like especially what you call adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma or lymphoma okay right the other less likely causes includes what you call a gall gallstone ileus remember gallstone ileus sometimes what happens if this is a gallstone pouch the stone over here it gets migrated and what you call this is this is a what you call it, second part of the duodenum okay and this stone gets migrated over here and sometimes because of this what you call the position of this intestine it gets stuck over here okay in the ileus okay ileum at the narrowest point and this causes the what you call the blockage of the passage of this um, what you call the flow of food into through this obstruction okay so there are some other causes like cross disease Crohn's disease or intersusception intersusception or even volvulus okay these can cause small bowel obstruction right guys very important remember okay so these are the causes first we know the most common cause being the what you call the adhesions okay then we can have hernias okay malignancies like adenocarcinoma or lymphoma then gallstone ileus okay uh, then we have a, what you call cross disease intersuspicion or volvulus these are the causes for small bowel obstruction okay what happens when there is obstruction when there is an obstruction to this the what you call the proximal, the proximal dilatation of the intestine due to accumulation of GI secretions. For example, if this is the intestine, okay. Right? If this is the obstruction over here, the proximal part of the intestine gets distended remember it it what you call it get distended can you see over here it's, it's compared to this one it's, it's distended right the proximal part get into why because of accumulation of gs secretions gs secretions and swallowed air Okay, and this bowel dilatation, which you call stimulates, uh, what you call cell secretory activity, resulting in more fluid accumulation, and this will result in a more fluid accumulation because of cell secretory activity. 
and this in turn leads to increased peristalsis above and below the obstruction with frequent loose stool. What happens because of this, the peristaltic movements will be more in what you call the pre to this stone obstruction or sorry this to this obstruction or after this obstruction the peristalsis will increase and that leads to the patient can have what you call diarrhea okay not the constipation it's diarrhea remember okay and vomiting occurs if the level of obstruction if this level of obstruction is very proximal okay and increasing small bowel distension leads to increased intraluminal pressure. Let's talk about that. When there is increasing small bowel distension, small bowel gets distended. This leads to increased intraluminal pressure. This can cause compression of mucosal lymphatics. So we have the lymphatics over here. Okay, if I, you can draw over here. These lymphatics gets blocked over here. Okay because of the pressure and um, leading to what you call a bowel lymphoma that leads to an enlarged lymph nodes then you can call it the bowel lymphedemas bowel wall lymphedema okay now what happens with even higher what you call intraluminal hydrostatic pressure uh, the increased hydrostatic pressure in the capillary beds results in a massive third spacing of fluid, electrolytes and the proteins into intestinal lumens. Now look at this. What is the cause? There is an obstruction. There is an obstruction to the small intestine. Because of that, there is an increase in what you call uh, the intraluminal pressure, hydrostatic pressure. And this pressure led to the formation of uh, swelling of what you call accumulation of lymphatics in lymph node that leads to uh, what you call bowel wall lymphedema okay and this further increase causes what you call um, the capillary beds to what you call uh, to increase what you call the expulsion of this fluid into third spacing of the fluid third spacing of the fluid electrons and proteins into the intestinal lumen okay and the fluid loss and dehydration okay maybe see we remember and contribute to what you call because of this it can contribute to increased morbidity and the mortality right guys so it's all about the intraluminal hydrostatic pressure due to obstruction remember and now what happens the bacteria in the gut proliferate okay there is a bacteria there are bacteria or a normal flora right so whenever there's change in what you call the normal flora to the infection the infection overtakes okay whenever there is a change in immunity whenever there is change when you are taking antibiotics okay you kill the normal flora there's a chance of what you call um, some other bacteria to come up and cause what you call infection of the colon or intestine as we read in what you call uh, uh, pseudomembranous colitis right and the proliferate proximal to what happens these bacteria proliferate okay in the gut proximal to the obstruction and the microvascular changes in the boil wall allows this translocation to the mesenteric lymph nodes okay and remember the most common bacteria being the E. coli right guys you getting me right and as we discuss strangulated uh, what do you call um, so small boil obstruction are most commonly associated with adhesions, remember? Okay, and what happens either it could be due to hernia, due to strangulation hernia, it compresses the bowel wall and causes the, what you call lack of arterial blood supply, necrosis, ischemia, ischemia and necrosis, okay? And ultimately due to what you call perforation, peritonitis and death, right? Or either the, the what you call the, the, the obstructed loop can what you call twist on its own mesenteric pedicle. Okay, it gets twisted. If this is this, it gets twisted like this. Okay, when it gets twisted, what happens? There is a lack of blood supply to that area and hence results in necrosis, then perforation, then peritonitis, and then death. Okay, guys? Now, let's talk about the symptoms. So, now it's clear what are the symptoms. The most important being the crampy, the crampy abdominal pain. The patient will have nausea. The patient will have vomiting and the abdominal distension also. Abdominal distension. Okay. Crampy abdominal pain is really very important. Nausea and vomiting, abdominal distension. 
and patients can have diarrhea they will have fever and tachycardia and signs of peritoneal signs if there is a sign of what you call intestinal ischemia right guys so these are the really very important what you call uh, um, symptoms of the patients of uh, SBO the small boil obstruction remember constipation can be seen in these patients but it's a late finding okay it can be seen as what you call because no fluid is passing through that obstruction whatever has remained has undergone what you call a, uh, through diarrhea it has gone and now the uh, post distal to this obstruction there's nothing in the bowel so he will have the constipation right like absence of flatus or a bowel movements right and remember if you examine the patient's abdomen you will hear more what you call the the abdominal sounds the bowel sounds will be hyperactive bowel sounds will be hyperactive bowel sounds will be hyperactive because of increased what you call increased um, peristalsis initially but later it can be the bowel sounds can be what you call hypoactive okay so there are two things you can see in SBO bowel sounds can be hyperactive bowel sounds can be hypoactive it can be hyperactive it can be hyperactive but hyperactive is initially you see hyperactive because of increased peristalsis as we discussed before here okay right guys so now let's talk about the diagnosis what are the x-ray findings abdominal x-ray findings they show dilated they show dilated loops of small bowel very important finding small bowel on flat plate on flat plate and air fluid levels air fluid levels on upright films okay air in the colon may be represent what you call early complete or incomplete obstruction remember so this is really very important sign dilated what you call dilated loops okay so let me dilated loops of small bowel on a flat plate and air fluid levels on upright abdominal films. If air in the colon is present, then it indicates either complete or incomplete obstruction. Just try to Google the images of this. Okay, you will get plenty of images, small bowel obstruction. I cannot upload an image over here because of the copyright issue, guys. Right, guys? Okay. Now let's talk about what you call, uh, um, you, after that you can do what you call a bay, small boil follow through or CAT scan, okay, computer tomography, okay, or follow through, right guys. So you can localize the point of obstruction and you can go ahead with the surgery. But now what's the treatment before going to surgery? Remember. Is what you call resuscitation with IV fluids with normal saline okay nasogastric tube decompression you have to take out the whatever is there in the intestine proximal to the obstruction you have to take it out because because of this you are having so many problems like what you call like um, increased peristalsis because of that patient is having diarrhea right pain abdominal everything will what you call will subside if you do nasogastric tube decompression okay and place what you call urinary catheter urinary catheter to monitor urine output okay and lastly abdominal exploration is performed in the patients with peritoneal signs leukocytosis fever okay right and if what you call there is a complete obstruction also right guys so thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure you're going out with some information about the small bowel obstruction please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends thank you so much take care